What comes after zero? Ace Combat 1, in the West called Air Combat, birthed the Ace Combat series. As something of a progenitor for the campaign-style air combat games, it's actually got a seriously loose grip of the player. You're presented with situations to solve with the power of your plane, of course, and there's a shockingly high number of series staple situations you're going through. There are concessions going this far back. The enemy AI isn't fantastic. The game plays a little bit digitally, but there's still bomber interceptions and dogfighting missions and bombing missions, valley and corridor runs, and even a final boss fight. The formula that would last another 10 years is pretty much forged right here. They had the entire flight control scheme already mapped out, nearly every basic mission type including the realistic and extreme. There's even one type of mission that can't be replicated anymore, not easily anyway, where the map takes away your map information and long distance radar, and plays on the technically restrained draw distance. The game recommends you follow oil pipelines to find pumping stations in the fog. The novelty is tremendous. That draw distance is an artifact of its age. Though the Ace Combat Control Scheme was already laid out this far back, using digital inputs instead of analog, the real pain is in the lack of a second stick for camera control. This can most often be felt as you vaguely try to piece together where your enemy is based on your radar and chasing the red triangles on the edge of the screen. Spatial and situational awareness suffers from the camera being so strict to your viewpoint, especially once stealth fighters start getting introduced and hiding from your radar. Compounding this effect, there's the visuals. The primitive polygons are charming and adequate. It's more appealing than a lot of games before and after it. In fact, most of the visuals on some levels are simply a background gradient blurring what should be a horizon in what should be atmosphere. It's a delightfully efficient style, rudimentary and clear. Given there's no real geometry on the floor at times, the shallow draw distance and no way to pan the camera toward the horizon or to look for landmarks, there's many times when there's no intuitive sense of height. Contact with the ground is death, which should be avoided. The cockpit fortunately has instrumentation to tell you exactly how high up you are, but realistically, when you take the camera outside of the cockpit to make for interesting footage, the game realistically doesn't give you any instruments. No radar, no altitude reading, and no pitch angle. Flying towards the ground during a loop can be horrifying in its blindness. Now I point that out not because it ruined my fun, but because I was quite fascinated with the sensory experience, or lack thereof. It's like walking down a flight of stairs in the dark. Though, this might actually be the worst game for such an easy and deadly mistake, given that it has a type of permadeath mechanic. How does an Ace Combat game have a permadeath-like consequence? Set in a nameless place at an unknown time, you're charged with the liberation of a small coastal nation with associated islands. The nation was subject to a military coup by terrorists. Unable to depend on their own forces, the country hires out mercenaries to restore order, one base at a time, through an air dominance campaign. And you do just that. There's a pretty commendable open-endedness to this outcome. After the first few missions, you've probably got the fundamentals down that planes go varying degrees of extremely forward, so missions 5 and 6 appear at once. With no reliance on narrative, the game reveals itself to allow you to retake the islands in branching order. So if one mission is too tough, you can fall back on another. As you shoot down planes, you unlock those planes for purchase. The points that you earn are plentiful, to say the least, building up your options steadily. You can even get duplicates. That's because when your plane gets shot down, when you run out of time, represented by fuel, or when you fly into a wall, you will lose that plane forever. At one point, I'd shot down an A-10, immediately purchased it and said I'd fly it no matter what the next mission was just for fun. It was a ravine flying mission. The A-10 very quickly found its way into a wall, but that's fine because I purchased an F-15 and tried again to great success. The logical end point is that if you lose every plane in your arsenal, it's a true game over, back to the last save if you made one. You do that with the select button, by the way. This means that, yes, you can scum the system due to a lack of autosaving on the PlayStation 1, but that's not very sporting, is it? Another mitigating factor is the economy. This game, if you've beaten any other Ace games, rewards you handsomely. That's why they introduced wingmen. Mission progress unlocks more skilled and well-equipped wingmen at your disposal, all the way from Sally in his A-10 to Bill in his F-16C, up to Hal in his F-22A Raptor. I paid a small fortune of 15 million credits to have Hal accompany me for the final mission, ordering him to guard my tail as stealth planes came to obstruct me from attacking this superplane. And this is a final boss, all right. Again, you can see the formula this far back. The music in this game might be a little bit more synth rock than would become the standard, not that it's unfitting. 
The fast pace of these missions invites such high-octane driving electric guitar strums, and it more strongly contrasts with the slow, considerate, and emotional electronic music of the ultimate fight, a massive, looming threat called Sky Fortress. Even back in 1995, the artistry and sense of noble triumph within Ace Combat's final missions was still so well-crafted. There's a feeling of inevitability that you were chosen to battle this Goliathian endeavor. If Mobius 1 was Fighter Jet Jesus, right now we're out here being Fighter Jet David. And yet, through this, my wingman didn't guard my tail. He didn't attack enemy planes. He wasn't even within the draw distance. Hal, the F-22 ace, watched me beat the final boss all on my own, and then joined me for the final results screen and got joint commendation for my skills and tenacity. That's not a glitch. This couldn't have been avoided by telling him to focus on targets or go on his own. Wingmen genuinely do nothing. This would be a problem that continued off and on through the series, but... At least in Ace Combat 4, I'm not paying them with my own fucking money. I'm here trying to save a nation from some Philistine army, and I'm given the help of a terrible AI that can't do what I ask. There's no cutscene save for an intro and credits. There's no larger moral implication of the war. You could call this an underdeveloped scenario by the future standards of the franchise, and shockingly enough, past standards. I'm sure that the natural assumption is that the insubstantial story is because Ace Combat 1 was based on two preceding arcade games, Air Combat and Air Combat 22. But that's surprisingly incorrect. The games were extremely basic in their gameplay situations, dogfighting simulators with difficulty modes, but that was obscured by the arcade Air Combat's fanciful setting, where the Cold War collapsed in the 21st century to birth a mega-corporate state, engaging in inter-corporate warfare. The player, a member of the UN, is sent out to quell the upset. That's actually the kind of story we've come to expect now, and that's a game that predates the PlayStation itself. That is to say, Ace Combat 1 isn't simplistic because it was a PlayStation 1 launch title, nor because the team weren't interested in elaborate and dystopic narratives. It seems like an intentional choice, as the gameplay itself is deeply compelling and didn't need to be paired with a similarly deep story, just like its internal 3D contemporaries of Tekken and Time Crisis. We could try to bleed some narrative depth from the tidbits we get, and I'm sure that's what's expected of me at this point. The omnipresent commander voice is a native of this unnamed nation. He labels an ideological group that's infiltrated the military and overrun the government, in a coup, as terrorists, which somewhat ignores the perhaps more accurate and much more terrifying label of military dictatorship. This commander may view the new government as a threat to his authority, and he's trying to undermine what's been quite a successful takeover. His response has been to hire mercenaries to retake the country for him. Historically, paying outside forces for their support in retaking a country has undermined the rulership of anyone who's attempted it in the eyes of the public. Furthermore, if your country is taken by military force and you just retake it by military force, each side's means are identical and just as underhanded as one another. Except our campaign ruined oil fields, destroyed ports, brought down mining equipment, and the military force doesn't seem like just a select group of people, it seems like the entire military force and then some. Was the old government we're fighting for even democratic? Maybe the coup was a valiant attempt to salvage the dignity of an oppressed people. Obviously, I'm reading too far into this game than Project Ace is likely cared to explore. They were far more interested in showing off cool fighter jets with neat paint jobs in the FMVs than exploring the conflicted morality of war. Explanations of the Scarface unit's unbridled heroics on the Skull Islands in this game's timeline placement being alongside Ace Combat Zero would only be retrofit into the Strange Real canon, well after the fact. Ace Combat 1 would rather give the player choices than story, so you could create your own journey through the game, risking your favourite fighter jets heroically for an unquestioned good cause. And that makes Ace Combat or Air Combat for the PlayStation 1 to American and European players, a game still well worth making fond memories with. Thank you, I've been Gizo Gitai. Special thanks to Osaka, The Cat, and Waposa 